Nairobi and Dar es Salaam can be argued to be two of East Africa's most popular cities. And if you're interested in visiting any of these cities, then you want to watch this video till the end. Stay tuned to learn more. <laughs> What's good fam? I trust that you are doing well and living your best life from wherever you are watching from today. Now recently someone hit me up on my DMs and asked me the question, between Nairobi and Dar es Salaam, which city should I visit first? So this is the inspiration behind today's video. Now if you're not following me on Instagram, please do so. It's at Inspire for Travel One and I do post exclusive content on there which is not always featured on this channel. So today I'll just be sharing my experiences and observation having lived in both cities and you can make a decision for yourself to decide whether or not either of these cities is suitable for you. Don't believe a word I say but check it out yourself. Okay, to start off this vlog, we'll be talking about Nairobi, Kenya, nicknamed the Green City in the Sun, or some people call it the Safari Capital of the World. Now, one of the things I do admire about the people of Nairobi is the spirit of entrepreneurship. People are always thinking about innovative ways to create some kind of business. For example, mobile bar barbering, right? You'll have people that will get some kind of trailer, really decorate it nicely and you know decorate inside and everything like that and they'll just set up a barber shop in there somewhere in a nice area or even or it could be even in the hood fam you know what i mean and that will be a business and a lot of people will be coming and from there they'll grow get another kind of um, trailer and develop another barbershop somewhere else and just like that they have a train of barbershops throughout the city man Nairobi people there are real entrepreneurs when it comes to creating certain business sometimes um, it's positive sometimes it could be negative but one thing for sure is because of the nature of the city itself you got a lot of people coming from different parts of Kenya right so people are coming to hustle people are coming to create a better life for themselves so people have to be creative right so that is something i do really admire like you know when you live in places like the west for example in england you have job seekers allowance and universal credit and different things like that so some people could be a bit lazy they'll just stay on benefits for years and not really try to be creative or you know be innovative to create any kind of business People prefer to just pro pro perhaps get employment somewhere and if they get fired, go back on the credit again. But in Nairobi, like for the most part, there is, I think, some kind of benefits for um, senior citizens and stuff. But people have to be creative to um, generate income for themselves. And I really admire the entrepreneurship out there in Nairobi. Another thing about it. As a tourist who is visiting there one of the things you like there is a national park within the cities and you can see different animals like elephants and different things like that so if you're thinking to yourself well I want to visit Kenya but I don't really want to go to the Maasai Mara I don't want to go too far to to see certain animals well Nairobi being the capital of Kenya, you can see that within Nairobi if you're not willing to travel too far, which is always um, a bonus for people visiting the city. After all, it's called the safari capital of the world. And I think it's one of the few places in the world where you will find a national park within the city. So that's really interesting. One of the things I do like about there. In terms of nightlife, man, Nairobi, they party they have a saying party after party in Nairobi so if you're a person when you travel you're looking for that experience of the nightlife and partying and meeting different locals meeting people then Nairobi is the place to be different clubs are available and they cater for all budgets so you always find some kind of party happening in Nairobi so if you're that type of person that looking for that holiday Nairobi is your best bet a lot of people might choose to go, you know, other places in Europe or maybe even Dubai and stuff. But 
give Nairobi a try if you're looking for that nightlife vibe. These people know how to have fun, they know how to party, they like dancing. So yeah, Nairobi, when it comes to that, I gotta take my hats off. They have a they know how to have fun and have a good time. I really do admire that about the people there. So another thing I do like about Nairobi is the head office for the Kenya Investment Authority is located in Nairobi. So if you go to the old mutual tower um, that's located in Upper Hill on the 15th floor, you can find their offices. And I'm just highlighting it at the bottom here for you to see so you can check that out if you're ever in Nairobi. Now, when you go there, it's a one-stop shop. So all the information in regards to work permits, residency permits, extending your stay, um, investment opportunities in the country and stuff like that, all that information can be secured if you visit their offices. You can meet people who can speak to you and give you in-depth information about investment in Kenya. Now, this is their website here, Ken Invest, and it talks about, you know, why invest in Kenya, um, investment procedures, things you need to um, have paying taxes, working in Kenya. They also have information in regards to the various sectors that you can invest in in Kenya. So that is really good. So I'm really happy that you can find such um, an office or building where you can go in and find out that information and you can find that in the capital of Kenya, Nairobi. So let's talk about the hospitality and the welcoming nature of the people in Nairobi and just Kenya in general. Now I feel that sometimes they, a lot of people give Kenya the bad rap as not being friendly and stuff like that. But from my experience, I found Kenyans quite friendly actually. I think with Kenyans, right, they may take a little while to warm up to you because they, they gotta know you first you know you're a stranger and stuff they want to see what type of person you are right but from once they really once they start to get to know you man they will go length and miles to make sure that you're safe and they will look out for you in the country right because i remember i was in nairobi and some parts of nairobi now these are not the tourist areas and i want people to really bear this in mind right nairobi is a massive city and like with any city across the world there's some areas which have bad reputation right so had a few kenyan friends and they said to me look wemba don't go this part at this time of the night during the day you can walk there but this side this time of the night i'll advise you don't go that's that part and stuff and where they were telling me to go it's really not a place that i should be going anyways it's not it's not a tourist area or anything like that and it's a way off the beaten part so if you're visiting nairobi the chances of you going to some of these areas is like zero so they just they just really were just telling me just be careful so they they give you information about the do's and don'ts in the city and for the most part i felt safe i felt safe in nairobi to be real with you there's a lot of shopping malls um out there um even at night basic precaution like you know don't walk on don't walk in on roads which is not well lit and stuff instead of walking it'll be advised to take an uber in certain areas and things like that that is for like any city really across the world and yeah man I, f I find kenyans to be quite welcoming people man you know they'll invite you to come and have some nyama choma and ugali and they'll laugh and when, once people really start seeing that you come with a very positive vibe with a clean heart you know and you generally interested in learning about kenya and you appreciate kenyans people will also show you the same love back and i do like that about being in kenya for the most part now i know in my last video i did talk about safety and stuff like that but to be honest with you that those type of stigma is something that of all things which happened a long time ago i'm not saying that it happens today like all the time like like anywhere in the world you just gotta be vigilant but i do appreciate the kenyan people and i think if you do visit there right you will meet people who will be much welcoming to you and willing to make sure that you have a good stay in kenya now saying that right let's move away from the people let's say like the the people that you meet in kenya and let's go to the immigration and stuff like that now my dealing with the immigration 
from my experience, it has been quite straightforward as long as you, you have all the documents and stuff that is required, right? If you can, once, once you have that, then it's generally fine. Now, you do get some times where some rogue elements within there might try to, you know, overcharge you for certain things. So that's something that you'll have to be vigilant about. And a one way to really counteract that is getting all the information you need in advance, right? So if you need a visa, knowing when, you, you knowing what visa you need to apply for in advance, have that information. You can go online and there's a lot of information about that available. So getting that in advance is important. Don't overstay in your time in Kenya. Very, very important, guys. There's a lot of people who go, they end up having such a good time and all of that, and then they may overstay their time. And then they go to the immigration and they may get a challenge and they may find that they're being charged quite a lot, right? So that is something that you, you want to bear in mind for traveling in Kenya. Now, this is something which is, in fact, across the board throughout many African countries, guys. It's not just Kenya. It's across different African countries. So that's a certain you just have to bear in mind. Know your position. If you're going to stay in Kenya, you got a visa for a certain period of time, you want to extend your stay, find out the information way beforehand instead of trying to find out on the same day because someone might just end up telling you a different information just to get extra money from you. And if you want to really stay in Kenya long term, then it's best, like I was mentioning you before, like Ken Invest and stuff, they give you information about, you know, staying in Kenya long term, what you need, what, what, what are some of the, what's the procedure. So once you have that information in place, then you can know how to navigate your way throughout the society. So I think things like that is what you need to bear in mind for a society like Kenya. But there's information available, guys. So bear that in mind when you're traveling throughout the country. Another thing which is quite amazing about Kenya and what I like about it is the M-Pesa system they have. Now, that's a mobile money transfer service. And for the most part, guys, Kenya is almost like a cashless society. So Safaricom is, is where you go to set up your M-Pesa account. Once you get that set up, you can put money on there and wherever you go, maybe restaurants, shopping mall, you're paying an Uber, you're paying a border border driver, whoever, you can pay via M-Pesa and you don't, have, you don't need to have cash on you. And that's a, a bonus. Sometimes you go to some societies and you got to take out so much money and you're carrying a lot of money on you and you may feel uncomfortable about that, right? Carrying a lot of money on you, but in... Kenya with that whole M-Pesa system they have, that is an amazing, amazing bonus. And that's something I like, not only in Nairobi, this is throughout Kenya. So for example, I was getting a bus from Nakuru to Kisumu and I didn't have cash on me. And they said, no, it's fine, pay the M-Pesa, pay the M-Pesa. So that is good. You just put, a, you could put a lot of money on there. You could put maybe a, like, let's say, depending on how long you, you're staying, you can put maybe about 4,000, 5,000 on there and you know you're good. Wherever you're going, you can use the M-Pesa. You can still maybe have, maybe, you know, like 100, 200 shillings on you just in case for any other thing. But like maybe if you're planning to get the Matatu. Now the Matatu is their version of the Dala Dala in Tanzania, which is the local buses. So you can pay the matatu in cash and stuff but generally for the most part the society is a cashless society you can pay with impesa and that is a bonus when you're traveling throughout kenya another important thing that you need to know about nairobi is the fact it's a highland city it's located within the highlands now it's over 5500 feet elevation above sea level and the climate there is a subtropical highland climate, subtropical, so below tropical, right? And that means it can get really cold in Nairobi at certain parts of the year. Now, the hottest time in the city is between December to March and the other months of the year, it can be chilly. You can, you can, you can be chilly at night. You may have warm days, very cold at night, or sometimes throughout the day, it can be 
cold and so you'll see if you look at certain videos in Nairobi sometimes you'll see people wearing winter jackets and stuff like that so it does get cold there in comparison to Dar es Salaam which is a coastal city so we'll be talking about that once we reach um, the Dar es Salaam part but just bear that in mind when it comes to the weather in Nairobi so if you're a person that really prefers maybe a coastal city and you prefer maybe when the weather is pretty much um, hot all year round then Nairobi may not be a suitable city for you but if you're a person who don't mind the various seasons and you can balance between hot and cold then you'll be fine in Nairobi and finally communication now communication is important whenever you are traveling and you'll find that in Kenya you won't really have much of a problem especially a lot of you who are coming from English speaking countries now yes um, Swahili is spoken but a lot of people speak the English language it's not exclusive for just the upper class or the middle class um, person you could get people who work on the streets right they can speak English so if you need to ask a question depending on where you are you can always speak and you can't speak Swahili or something you can always ask someone in the English language right now like everywhere in society you're not just going to ask any and anyone for certain information or directions but for the most part you, you go into a shop you, you, you meet maybe a market vendor or something someone will be able to communicate with you and give you some kind of information depending on what you're asking for and that's what I like um, another thing I like about Nairobi as well especially for foreigners visiting there that will be a bonus for you so for communication hands up to Nairobi they've really um, got that going on when it comes to communicating especially for an international um, visitors so that's a bonus guys okay now we're going to talk about Dar es Salaam Dar es Salaam city nicknamed the city of peace or some people call it Bongo land people that uses their brains in life and I really enjoy Dar es Salaam man Dar es Salaam is an amazing city guys and one of the first things I'll say I like about Dar es Salaam it's a peaceful city man very peaceful city right you can go for the most part anywhere in Dar es Salaam and you ain't got to really worry too much about your safety especially to, during the day there's some parts at night you don't really want to go especially if you don't know the area you don't know anyone there but putting that aside Dar es Salaam is for the most part a very peaceful city right another thing I really like about Dar es Salaam of course it's a coastal city and for someone who appreciate tropical weather like being on the beach and stuff you're not sure in finding some nice beaches where you can go and hang out and chill out in Dar es Salaam maybe Coco Beach or you may cross the cross the sea and go over to Kigamboni and chill out on the beach there there's always something happening on these beaches and I do enjoy my time there going on the beach in Dar es Salaam especially on a Sunday like you'll find throughout the week a lot of people might be busy but there's always something happening on Sundays and stuff even Saturdays so it's really nice in Dar es Salaam you know being a coastal city when it comes to the beach and the beautiful weather out there okay so in regards to Dar es Salaam um, in a major city like Dar es Salaam it's good to know like Nairobi you can also find um, a one-stop shop where you can get information if you're ever interested in investing in Tanzania and you do have the Tanzania Investment Center which is located in Dar es Salaam I believe on Shaban or Robert Street you can just punch it in on Google and you'll find the address now on there they have information in regards to um, why invest in Tanzania they talk about the investment opportunities which are available in Tanzania so for example we have things in tourism um, edible oils cotton and textiles livestock fishing mining all of that information you can find there they also have um, things you can do at the center things you can find out so in regards to company registration your tax identification number residence permit work permit business license so for information purposes that can be your first 
port of call where you can go and find out certain information. Now, like in many African countries, what I have observed, things are not always set in stone. So for example, you may be coming from the United Kingdom, the United States, and things are pretty much the same um, all year round. This is what you need to do. You know, there, there isn't so much sudden changes, right? But in throughout many countries in Africa, you will find certain things do change more um, more than often in comparison to other countries. So that's something you do have to bear in mind when you, you know, thinking about investment and stuff. It's always good to always try to get up-to-date information. And your first port of call could be going to like the investment center like here and speaking to someone about, you know, investing in the country for information purposes, right? So they do have their, con their contact information on here as well. You can see all of that available here and the address of the offices and all of that are available here. So that's something that you can check out. Now that this is for those who are interested in investing. So I do like that about Tanzania. Right, another thing about Dar es Salaam. Every time I go to Dar es Salaam, there's some kind of development. And, and I'm talking in regards to like infrastructure. Now, a major issue that used to happen in Dar es Salaam in the past was traffic congestion right but with the new system that they have brought in the brt system and that's the bus rapid transit system right and i did a video on that with nice beautiful blue buses and stuff it has reduced the traffic congestion in dar salaam so if you're getting those buses to different parts of the city you can get there in a much quicker time in comparison to the past so infrastructure wise i find dar es salaam is really developing and that's a that's a really good system they have and it's a really good system that stands out for seeing in east africa and a lot of other countries can take note of that and learn from Dar es Salaam in terms of dealing with traffic congestion. Now, it's not all perfect. Um, there are still traffic congestions in certain parts, but I think over the years they have made great strive in improving the service when it comes to that. So living there, I'm glad there's a BRT system available. So whenever I decide to get on that bus to go somewhere, if I need to go quickly, I can get to there to my destination in a very quick time. Another thing I like about um, Dar es Salaam being a coastal city, it has had a past where it had a lot of um, influence from the Asian continent. They had Arab influence and stuff, and a lot of these cultures have fused together with indigenous African culture and this is reflected like in the foods and stuff the rice dishes the pilau dishes the way they season their meat the spices available and stuff and that is really nice um really nice and uh, you go to certain restaurants in Dar es Salaam they really have some amazing food amazing street food and stuff like that so that is something that as a tourist I think you'll appreciate once you visit the city there in Dar es Salaam guys so if you're a person that when you go out you know you like you know you like certain spices in your food you like food with rich flavors and stuff you will definitely find that in Dar es Salaam so that I really I really do like that about the city when it comes to the food and the spices that are available apart from that throughout Tanzania um, it's something which is embedded in the culture but people do really appreciate herbal medicine and you'll find that throughout Dar es Salaam so if you're a person that really value your health and you're looking for things you know from a herbal nature for example if you go to um, well it comes from Zanzibar you can find it in Zanzibar you can find it in Dar es Salaam again as, as well but things like CMOS you can get that in Dar es Salaam. So a lot of um, herbal stuff, cinnamon, um, and all of that is available in the city. So I do really like that when I travel to Dar es Salaam. So that's a plus for it right there. Now in terms of the nightlife, I won't say it's developed as Nairobi, but they do have some cool place where you can go and um, hang out and have a good time. Places like Samaki Samaki, elements and all these places you can have a good time at these spots in Dar es Salaam so yeah you won't you if you're thinking about enjoyment 
it may not be as extensive as Nairobi, but there's some places where you can go out and have a good time and chill out with friends and stuff. Um, in terms of the communication, in comparison to Nairobi, you do get more people who speak the English language. So um, communication could be an issue if you can't really converse in Swahili. But if you're going and hanging out in places where a lot of the educated class of people from Tanzania socialize, um, you will find people who you can communicate with. And a lot of the major tourist areas and um, restaurants and stuff which are geared towards an international clientele, you do get people who can communicate in English effectively. So yeah, Dar es Salaam can, can be an amazing city. I think some of the challenges like what some people experience there in terms of the immigration, I think the immigration, it can be, it can be much more easy dealing with the immigration in Tanzania than Kenya. I think the problem you will get with the immigration is when it comes to, let's say, certain extending your stay and they can't really see why you, you don't give them a solid reason for wanting to extend your stay. Or it could be you overstaying in Tanzania and things like that. When it comes to those part of dealing with the immigration, that's where it can be a challenge. But for the most part, if it's just you, you get a tourist visa, you come for your holiday, and, you, you, and you, you, know, you get your three months after that, you decide to leave, you're leaving. It is a smooth process with the immigration. Like, you know, that's it. But it only get complicated for really long-term stay, really long-term stay, and they can't see, well, you can't give them a really solid reason for doing so. For the most part, I like dealing with the immigration in Tanzania when it comes to staying there as a tourist for a tourist visa. So, yeah, man, um, to sum up, I think both cities are amazing. I think you'll find in Kenya, they've really invested a lot in um, tech. You know, like the capital Nairobi is known also as the Silicon Valley of East Africa. So, you know, internet connection is really fast there. There's a lot of businesses geared towards information technology. And you'll see that within um, the culture of Nairobi when you go there. Even the M-Pesa system, mobile um transfer service and stuff like that really great so that's a big plus for nairobi dar es salaam peaceful city it has a reputation for being a very peaceful city friendly people hosp hospitable people of course it, it, you get your good and bad in every society but for the most part people in dar es salaam they like meeting people from outside of the country right in terms of the um bus rapid transit system really great if you if you know if you're going to certain places and you get on that system you can get in your destination in no time really quick and effective system amazing restaurants i love the fusion of spices and stuff that has been incorporated um, in the culture and that's of course because they've mixed with different peoples from a pop different parts of Asia, the Arab world. So it's a nice fusion of the culture there down in Dar es Salaam. And for someone who is visiting, I think you'll really appreciate that. Even in technology, it may not be ad advanced as Nairobi, but you do get um, their version of M-Pesa and stuff in, um, like, you know, if you go via Vodacom and stuff, they have the M-Pesa there in Tanzania, but it's not, I will say it's not as used as much as in comparison to Kenya or even in Nairobi and stuff. So tech-wise, I think Dar es Salaam is gradually developing and it's, and it's coming up nicely. And for investors, that could be a, in, um, a business opportunity for you as well. That could be a bonus because you may find, well, if you go to Nairobi, the competition might be a bit too much, but you may be able to bring your skills and services to Dar es Salaam and it may be better suited, suited for that city. So, so it all depends on what type of traveler you are. And both cities can be amazing depending on what you want to do. One being a highland city, the other being a coastal city. So I trust you, you enjoyed my um, summary of both cities. And do like, share and subscribe to the channel by clicking on the red box below this video that says subscribe. My name is Wimba Imani and thank you for watching Inspire for Travel.